Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our foundation level sample questions discussion. So far we have covered two chapters of our uh, foundation level syllabus and covered a lot of questions uh, covering the chapter one and two. Now it's time we should look into the chapter three questions from the set A of foundation level. And this chapter three is all about static testing. So the moment we start talking about it, I want you to quickly recall all that learning which you had from the chapter three related to static testing. This chapter will contribute with five questions out of 40 during your examination. So it certainly can give you five marks out of 40 if you're right with all your questions and answers to them. So first, let's look at the very first question of this particular chapter. And the serial number is question number 14. Which of the following options are roles in a formal review? Now, if you remember in my tutorials, I would have highlighted to you for sure that generally there are some standard roles which are called out during a formal review process. And the standard roles include author, uh, manager, moderator, review leader, scribe, and reviewers. Now, the only catch from here is that who is a manager, who is an author, is that a ded dedicated designation or responsibility in an organization? No, it's more of a temporary role which is given to any individual who will be playing that responsibility as a part of the formal review process. Now, for an example, if I'm an author of a requirement document, I might be a business analyst for the organization. And if I'm preparing a requirement document, I become an author for it. Now, if a project manager is trying to organize this formal review, the manager is the project manager here. Similarly, when different people review this particular document under review, will be called as a reviewer, not by their respective designations like developer, designers, or testers, or maybe anyone else. So, it's very important for any individual to remember that Though you understand that a developer, tester, architect, or anyone else can be a part of the review process as a reviewer, but in a formal review process, they're not called as a developer or as a tester. Rather, collectively together, anyone reviewing the test process is called as a reviewer. So I think that's a very straightforward question to be picked up as the right answer here. So you can just have a look on all the four options. For example, A says developer, moderator, review leader, reviewer, testers. So tester and developer is not a standard role for the formal review. B, author, moderator, manager, reviewer, developer. Now here again, developer alone is not a standard responsibility, but everything else is a standard role. Number C uh, or option C is author, manager, review leader, reviewer, and designer. Designer is not a standard role of formal review process. And then option D, that is author, moderator, review leader, reviewer, and scribe are all the standard roles of a formal review process. And that's where the right answer here is D, author, moderator, review leader, reviewer, and scribe are the right answers. So Sometimes you just have to recall our learning and not just recalling. If you don't understand this precisely, you will always pick up any of these and you would say that uh, the options were quite close to each other. It was difficult to pick up the right answer. So this is where you think that. But did you, did you just understand that it could be due to your understanding issue, right? Because a syllabus never says that developers can be called as developer in the formal review process. So please uh, make sure that your understanding is equally important when you look at these type of questions. The next question, your question number 15, which activities are carried out within the planning of a formal review process? Again, a quick call out that what are the standard phases of our formal review process? Of course, the first stage is planning. Then you have kickoff, which is called as initiate review. Then you have individual preparation and uh, where individually people go through the documentation. Then you have issue communication and analysis as the fourth stage. And the fixed, fifth stage is fixing and reporting. Now, now they are talking about the very first stage that is planning and asking you what kind of activities do you expect to happen in the planning phase. Now, all you have to do is start pulling out the activities which do not happen in the planning and you'll be left off with the right answer. Because you need to be sure at the same time that what is the right answer and are you confident about it or not. So 
make sure that the other options are justified with the wrong answer. So let's see A, collection of matrices for the evaluation of the effectiveness of the review. Now very common sense they say is that effectiveness of any particular activity can be measured once it is completed. So of course this cannot be measured in the beginning at the mid or at the uh, on the way kind of thing. So you will only measure this at the end when you have completed the process. And that happens in the fifth stage, <clears throat> which is fixing and reporting. So certainly not a planning action. B, answers any questions the participants may have. Generally, this happens during the initiate review phase where moderators distribute the documentation and helps understand them the content and also answers any questions which the participants may have during the initiate review phase. So again, this is not something which can be in the planning phase. Let's look at C, definition and verification or fulfillment of entry criteria for the review. Now that's where something you can think about it that this is something which allows you to get into the process. Entry criteria is a checklist or it's in a list of items uh, which generally satisfied, uh, once satisfied, can allow you to start the process which is the last activity of the planning phase. Once the planning is complete, you look forward to evaluate your entry criteria and say, are you ready to get into the process? And if entry criteria is all set, you move into the next phase, which is initiate review. So it seems to be a good option, but let's confirm with the option D as well. The option D says evaluation of the review findings against the exit criteria. Now again, evaluation and exit criteria. Exit criteria will be measured once everything is done, of course, to tell you that can we stop the review process now and should be again done at the last stage of your formal review process, which is fixing and reporting, right? And fixing and reporting is where you measure the exit criteria to stop this review process. So that's also not a part of the planning phase. So the right answer here is C, definition and verification of fulfillment of entry criteria for the review to get started is one of the activity which you perform during planning phase. Let's look at the next one, question number 16 here, which of the review types below is the best? Again, you could have conflicts, so they are clearly telling you that which one is the best option to choose when the review must follow a formal process based on rules and checklist, right? So here they're telling you the characteristics of the review type and you need to make sure that which one is something which goes as per rules and checklist. Now, all you have to do is quickly recall. You don't even have to look at the options because options are very straightforward, okay? The options will not help you pick up the right answer. Only the knowledge what you have gained during the learnings will help you get the right answer for such questions. So you have to start thinking about rules and checklist that where it was a mandatory thing, not an optional thing to be done out of the four types. If you see informal review, nothing happens as per the formal process. If you talk about walkthrough, we don't have rules and checklists in place in walkthrough as well. Technical, you may have process, you may have uh, management participation, you may have different other things, but not rules and checklist. And that's very straightforward. The most formal review type is your inspection, and inspection certainly consists of rules and checklist to be utilized as a mandatory step when you conduct inspection as a review type. So your straightforward right answer here is C, inspection, which is the most formal review and makes use of rules and checklist. There are different variants of this type of question. They ask unique points. For example, which type of review you will have uh, author leading the review, right? And that's answer is walkthrough. Which process leads into having inexpensive way of getting some benefit? Answer is informal review. At what point or which type of review you need technical experts to review your documentation or work product? The answer is technical review, right? So this is where you really need to you know, have those catchy, unique points which I've highlighted in my tutorial to get the right answer for it. So we'll stop here as we have covered three questions and we'll conduct the rest of them in the next tutorial. So that's all from this particular video team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.